Let's try to draw the geometry of this compound. Now, it looks like one of you was finding the oxidation number. No, just for practice. Just for practice. OK, so it's good that you noticed you don't need that for the geometry. All we need for the geometry is the coordination number, not the oxidation number. So Since you uh, did that practice, let's go back and check the oxidation numbers here. What's the charge in each individual chlorine? Minus one. Now, what's the charge in each of these? Zero. But I think you saw you put a charge on yeah. these, so these should be zero. You might have been confusing these with some other nitrogen-containing species, like nitrate or nitrite. Uh, I think you put like a negative one charge on this yeah, or something. So All right. So notice that we've learned about a bunch of nitrogen-containing species. Some are charged and some are not. NO3 and NO2 both have negative charges, whereas NO and NH3 are both neutral. Um, so you have to distinguish between the various nitrogen-containing compounds. These are neutral. So the charge overall would be uh, plus, plus 3 to get a plus charge overall. All right. Again, we didn't need that just for the geometry, but it was good practice to find that. That's going to be very important uh, for some of the later parts here. By the way, one thing we won't get to today is the crystal field theory, which I think you went on over on Friday. Yeah, well, we on in order to do crystal field theory, you need to get the oxidation number on the metal. So this was a very important practice that we went through. You can't do any, the very first step for a crystal field theory is getting the right oxidation number. So you do need to be able to go through this skill to do the more complicated problems here. All right, but we don't need it for isomerism. So let's go back to isomerism. All right, now, um, what is the angle between these two chlorines? 180. Good. But you notice that there's another isomer with a different angle. So you drew both of the isomers, which was good. What's the angle between these two chlorines? Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see, but they're at a 90 degree angle. That's right. Because remember, but how many isomers we can have then with these ones? Because we can put them in a different positions. Like for example, at two NH is in the, where CLs were. Draw what you were thinking there. Like um, here, this one. Okay. And then two NH is here, and then CL. Is it going to be the same as this one? Yeah, they are the same. And uh, you can see that here. Yeah. So those are the only two isomers that you can have, right? The only geometric isomers. The geometric anyway. isomers right.
So let's leave this aside for a second. So here's the two isomers. And the easiest way to see their isomers here is, again, um, the angle here between the two chlorines is 180. 180. So this would be trans. Mm -hmm. How do I know that the angle here is 90? That's a little bit hard to see, but remember that this bond isn't really pointing up. Remember this bond is really pointing away from you, but straight to the right. Well, if you think of this as pointing straight to the right, it's clear that it should be 90 degrees with something that's pointing straight up. That would have been easier to see. Well, any, all right, so anyway, this really is a 90 degree angle. Okay. okay, and so here the two chlorines are at a 90 degree angle, and here they're at a 180. So this would be trans, and this would be cis. So if they asked you to draw all the geometric isomers here, you, to get full credit, you'd have to draw both of these pictures. And you'd probably be expected to label which was cis and which was trans. We've learned that not all compounds have geometric isomers, but this compound definitely does. Notice that the first examples we did were showing you how you can have geometrical isomers in square planar geometries. But now we're seeing how you can have geometric isomers in octahedral geometries, which are a little bit more complicated, but it's, it's basically the same concept. But again, thinking about the bond angles, I think, makes it easier to see the difference between these. Now, notice that in this case, um, say this nitrogen here is 90 degrees from this nitrogen, 90 degrees from this nitrogen, and 180 from this one. And you could say the same thing, I think, about each of the nitrogens here. This nitrogen is 90 degrees from this nitrogen, 90 degrees from this nitrogen, and 180 from this. So even though these two pictures look very different, they're really the same thing, just rotated in different ways. Yeah, you can kind of rotate this chlorine up into this position, um, and uh, you can rotate uh, this chlorine down into this position to make these both the same picture. Right. All right, so these really are the same thing. So usually on these problems, you lose credit if you leave out any isomers, but you also usually lose credit if you draw multiple redundant <laughs> isomers. So you wouldn't want to draw both of these in your final answer. After thinking about this, we should now get rid of this. So with something like this, since there's only two chlorines, it's easy to just look at making sure one of the chlorines are 180 from each other yes. and then the other one's 90. That's right. Sentence. That's really all you have to do. Okay. But the frustrating thing here, notice, is that your answer might look different than the answer in the answer key. Because right. there's many different ways that you can draw each molecule. So you just have to ask whether you have the right answer, even if it looks a little bit different. Okay, so here we have the geometric isomerism for this case. But we're not saying that there's always these geometric isomers. For example, if this was connected to six chlorines, there would be no cis and trans. Or even if it was connected to five chlorines, there would be no cis and trans. It's only when we had um, this particular setup. Okay. By the way, does it make any difference whether you're dealing with something that's cis or trans? Well, it turns out that very often compounds can have very different properties, um, even if, because they're isomers. For example, the book mentions here that the cis isomer um, is violet and the trans isomer is green. So they have different properties. More important is oftentimes different isomers have different biological properties. Yeah. For example, when you're in the pharmaceutical industry, if you're trying to synthesize a drug, one isomer might have the desired effect and the other isomer might have no effect or even worse, might have a deleterious effect. Yeah. So this is a very important issue in when you're in pharmaceutical synthesis. Um, you have to create the right uh, the right isomer, or you can easily get um, uh, not the correct effect, you can easily get um, bad unwanted side effects uh, as well. Okay. It's like in organic chemistry, basically, what we Right, yeah, that's right. So it's actually, it should be helpful to you that I forgot that you already gone through organic chemistry. Of course, you know that stereochemistry is a, a, a huge issue in organic chemistry. Here we're just kind of brushing the surface uh, of that. 